This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Lead us, our Heavenly Father, as we open thy word to study today in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a statement in Acts 18.28 that I'd like to use today, and we'll study this verse and use, of course, several scriptures in connection with the tremendous truth set forth in Acts 18.28. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Well, now you say, Brother Green, what do you see in that? What do you see in that verse of scripture? For he, now that points back to Apollos, and we don't have time to discuss him, but he's the man, he was instructed by Aquila and Priscilla, they set him straight in the word of God, and then he mightily convinced the Jews. Now that's the first thing I want you to see. You know, Jesus, now of course this is in the book of Acts, and Jesus has been crucified, buried, risen, ascended, and the disciples have been preaching Jesus, and they've been declaring that he is the Savior of sinners. Now, back there when Jesus walked upon the face of the earth, he came into his own, and his own received him not. The reason they would not receive him, they said, we know who you are, we know your parents, we know your brothers, we know that you are an imposter. And they refused him. And when Pilate said, Whom shall I release, Jesus or Barabbas? They said, Barabbas. And Pilate said, What shall I do with Jesus? And they said, Crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Now, I think the saddest words Jesus ever uttered while he was here upon this earth were the words he uttered to his own people. He said to his own people, And you will not come to me that you might have life. You will not come to me that you might have life. Now, it was the Jews that Apollos convinced, and here's the way he did it. He convinced them publicly, that is, in public places. He went, I suppose, up and down the streets and in and out of the marketplaces, and he convinced the Jews that Jesus was Christ, and he did it out of the Scriptures. Now, beloved, I want to talk to you today right out of my heart, and I hope I can help somebody, because... I know there are people under conviction in Radio Land, there are people who would like to be saved, and they say, well, I just can't understand it, I just can't get it. Because the Baptists say this, the Methodists say something else, the Presbyterians, something else, the Pentecostals, something else, the Catholics, something else, the Episcopalians, the Lutherans, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Spiritualists, and the Christian Scientists, and we just keep on and on and on and on, and people throw up their hands, and they say, who's right, who's wrong, and whom shall I believe? Now, in Acts 16.31, we find the answer that Paul gave to the jailer at Philippi when he asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now let me say this. Save people go to heaven. Jesus came into the world not to seek and make church members. Now wait just a minute, beloved. Now don't, don't cut the radio off because I'm not fighting anybody. I'm just trying to give you today the Word of God sound and sure and understandable. Now Jesus didn't come to seek and to make church members. He didn't come to do that. I'm a member of the church, and if you're born again, you should be. Every born-again believer should be a member of a good Bible-preaching church. But Jesus didn't come to seek and to make church members. He came to seek and to do what? You know. He came to seek and to save. He came to seek and save. Luke 19, 10. He came to seek and to save. All right. Now then, if Jesus came to save people, then I want to know how to be saved. And so the jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16.31, Paul and Silas said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now then, the way people are saved, the way I'm saved, the way you're saved, the way any person, every person, regardless of their church affiliation, the way you are saved, if you're saved, you're saved by believing on Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other name, no other door, no other way. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Now then, Paul, writing to the Romans, he said, 
I bear record that my people have a zeal. Now, he was talking about his own people, Israel, the Jews. He said, I bear them record. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And then he goes on down, and he said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be a church member. No, 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 no. Thou shalt get religion. No, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say anything about becoming a church member. He didn't say anything about getting religion. He didn't say anything about getting baptized. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be S-A-V-E-D, saved. Now, in Acts 2.47, the Lord added to the church daily such as were being saved, 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 beloved friends, saved. All right. Now then, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, the only way to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you say, Brother Green, am I supposed to believe? that a man lived and lived a sinless life and died and rose again, a man that I never saw, a man that no one that I know ever saw. Now, Brother Green, do you expect me to, to believe that? Listen, beloved, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. The only way that you can stay out of hell and go to heaven is to believe that Jesus was Christ, the Son of God, to believe that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again. And the only way on earth that you can believe that is the same way that Apollos convinced the Jews. Now, how did he do it? Did he work any miracles? Nope. No, no, he didn't work any miracles. Did he uh, change any stones into bread? No. Did he call any fire out of heaven? No. No. What did he do? The Bible tells me that he convinced them from the Scriptures. He convinced them. He mightily, for he mightily convinced the Jews from the Scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now let me say this to you, and I beg you, I beg you to give me your attention, and please give to me open ears and an open heart. Now, just in case there is a heaven, and just in case there might be a hell, don't you think that it's good sense and good common uh, reason, don't you think it is, that you prepare just in case there might be a hell? Now, I know there's a hell. You don't have to convince me. And I know there's a heaven. I know there is a heaven. I know there is a hell. But you say, I'm a skeptic. I'm an agnostic. I don't know. And I don't believe anything that I can't see, feel, touch, or taste. And I, I can't accept accept that Bible stuff. I just can't accept that. All right, now I'm going to tell you something. There are millions who have, and there are millions in the world today who believe in the Word of God, and they have trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now, I ask you, in the name of all that's reasonable, don't you think that you owe this book a little consideration? Don't you think you do? Now, suppose I go back to the Old Testament, and God Almighty cried out to Israel, through the prophet Isaiah, come now and let us reason together. Now, I want to say that God is a God of reason, and God is a reasonable God, and God knows our frame, God knows we're dust, and God knows our limitations, and God doesn't expect anything of man that man can't do if he'll believe God. All right, so come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Now, listen, beloved, I want to ask you a question, and I beg you to, to hear me and hear me carefully. How do you know that there was a man named Columbus? Now, we are told and we are taught that Columbus discovered America. And how I thank God for America. But how do, how do I know that there was a man named Columbus? There's only one way to know it. I read it in the, in the geography and in the history books. I read in the school books when I was a boy and I was in school. I was taught from the books that I studied that Columbus discovered America. It gave the date. It gave all about it. When I listen, this Bible that I have in my hand tells me that God Almighty sent an angel, and I believe in angels. I've never seen an angel, but I believe there are angels. If there 
there were not angels, I don't believe any little children would ever live to be grown up. I don't believe they ever would. I think they'd all be killed. Every little child has a guardian angel. The angels take care of little children. If they didn't at all get killed, none of them would ever grow up to be young men and young women. I believe in angels. Now, God sent an angel to Mary, and God said, Mary, you're going to bring forth my son, my only son. And Mary said, I don't understand it. Luke chapter 1. Read Luke 1. This is the word of God. And Mary said, I don't understand it. I know not a man. That is, she was engaged to Joseph, but she was not married. Now, the angel told Mary that the Holy Ghost would overshadow her, and she would conceive and bring forth a son, and, and Joseph was instructed to name him Jesus. And the reason that God told Joseph to name him Jesus, God said he'll save his people. He'll save his people from their sins. All right. Now then, some of the most outstanding persons in the days of Jesus believed on him, but the masses rejected him. Now, for instance, Nicodemus was an outstanding man. He was the teacher in Israel. Now, I read about these great scientists that have lived and died. I read about them in the, in the books, the history books and other books, and I believe they lived. I never saw them. I never met them. I believe about these men. I never saw one of them, but I, I believe it because we have it in our books. Now, I believe, bless your heart, that uh, Nicodemus lived. I believe he was the teacher in Israel, and he went to Jesus, and Jesus talked to him, and he, he believed Jesus. He believed him, and he defended him, and when he was crucified, Nicodemus and Joseph, a rich man, claimed his body and gave him a, a decent burial in Joseph's tomb. Now, uh, of course, men who were crucified... They just threw their bodies over in the incinerator, the dump in Gehenna, the place where they burned the garbage outside the city. But Nicodemus claimed the body or asked the body of, uh, of Jesus, and he and Joseph buried the body. Now, I believe Nicodemus lived, but I never met him. He believed Jesus. I could go on down. There, there was Paul, Saul of Tarsus. He was one of the best educated men of his day. I suppose he was uh, at the very top so far as education and uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding was concerned. He believed Jesus Christ. He believed Jesus, and he gives us, he gives to us, the Apostle Paul, some of the clearest scriptures in all the Word of God concerning Jesus. He believed. Now, if Nicodemus believed, and if Paul believed, and I could come right on down the line, uh, we believe that uh, George Washington lived, and he was a God-fearing man. We believe Abraham, uh, Link, uh, Abraham Lincoln lived. I never met him. All I know is what the his history books tell me, and they, they, they tell me that he was a God-fearing man. Now, the thing that I'm saying is this. It's silly, it's foolish, it's absurd to believe about Columbus and to believe about these other people and say, I will not believe Jesus Christ lived. Now, he did live. Whether you believe it or not doesn't make any difference. And I'm here to tell you that I know he lived and I know he lives and I know he saves because 32 years ago plus, I was a drunk. I was a sloppy drunk a liar, a thief. I was a blasphemer of the vilest sort. And one night I stood in the doorway of a church over 32 years ago. Now, this didn't happen to me yesterday. This didn't happen to me last week, beloved. Years and years and years I've studied this Bible and I've searched these scriptures. Now, I stood in the doorway of a church and I heard a man, I heard a man read the wages of sin is death. And that man proved to me that I was going to hell, and he did it from the Bible. And then he said, the gift of God is eternal life. And he proved to me from the Bible that the gift of God is eternal life. And I believed it, and I received it. And I want to tell you, then and there, instantaneously, God made a new man out of me. Now, beloved, I, I, I believe I have a reasonable amount of common sense. I was reared on the farm. I, I was reared... At hard work, I was reared right out there with nature. I saw uh, the crops grow and, and the seasons and the birds and the flowers and the lilies of the field and the sparrows and the, I sowed the grain and I lived out there. The hen, the little chickens, I saw the grapevine, the fig tree. I saw the things that Jesus talked about. I was reared with them. Now, I, I heard this message and I believe this message. Now, I didn't have any thrills or chills. I didn't see any lights. 
I didn't hear any thunder. I just believed the message. The man said the wages of sin is death and the gift of God's eternal life. And I went down and he said, uh, uh, what, what you coming down for? What's your need? I said, I'm a sinner. I'm going to hell. And he read John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He read that scripture to me and I believed it and I received it. And God saved me then and there instantaneously. I didn't gradually quit cussing. I quit cussing that night. I didn't gradually quit drinking liquor. I quit drinking liquor that night. I poured out every drop I had hidden in, in my room at my home. I didn't quit gambling. I threw away my cards, my dice. I quit gambling that night. I quit cussing. I didn't taper off. I quit. Now, why? Because God put a new heart in my bosom. God put a new spirit within me. God gave me a new life. And God gave me something so much better than that that I had. I didn't want the old things anymore. Now, how did it happen? It happened by believing the Word of God. Beloved, this Bible, and I have a little Schofield Testament in my hand. That's all I have. I have no commentaries, no books. I don't have anything on this desk but this Bible in my hand. And this Bible tells me that God loved me and Jesus died for me. And Jesus said, if you'll hear my word, if you'll hear my word and believe on God that sent me, you'll have everlasting life. And I believe that. I believe that. He said he came to seek and to save and he sought me. He sought me that night through the ministry of that preacher as he preached on the wages of sin is death. I heard the message, I received it, and God saved me. I heard the words of Jesus. And he said, if I'd hear his word, if I'd believe on him, he'd save me. And I did just that, and God saved me. Now, I say to you today, you say I'm skeptical. I, I don't believe anything I can't see, I can't touch, I can't feel, I can't taste, I can't handle. Listen, one day when you're roasting in the lake of fire, begging for a drop of water to cool my tongue, you'll beg like the rich man. Give me a drop of water to cool my tongue. When you're begging in hell, you'll remember this day when Oliver Green on the gospel hour begged you and pled with you to have as much faith in this Bible as you have in the history books, the geography books, and the morning newspaper. You believe the morning newspaper. Oh, you may not believe every little item, but you believe, uh, you read about the war, you read about taxes, you read about this and that, and you believe it. But you read the Bible, and you won't believe it. You won't give God a chance. You know what? The thing that's so sad, you will not come to Jesus that you might have life. The only thing that any person can do to stay out of hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, trust Jesus Christ. You can't save yourself. You cannot wash your sins away. You can't live good enough. You can't be good enough. You can't live clean enough. You cannot live a righteous life and go to heaven through your righteousness. The only way that you can step inside the pearly gates and walk on the streets of gold is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in his shed blood and finished work and God will save you. Now let me give you some scripture. Listen. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace, God's grace, God saves you by grace, and you are saved by grace by having faith. Faith in God. You have faith in the banker. You have faith in your doctor. You go to your doctor and he tells you that you have low blood and he'll give you some pills and you have faith in him. You go to the drugstore, buy the pills and you take the pills. Now the Bible tells you that you're a sinner and you need a savior. And the Bible not only tells you that you are a sinner and that you'll burn in hell, but the Bible prescribes the cure. He tell, The Bible tells you that Jesus died for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But you won't believe that. You'll believe the doctor. You'll believe the nurse. You'll believe the druggist. You'll believe everybody but Jesus. I warn you. I warn you. If you drop into hell, you'll drop into hell because you refuse to do what the Jews did in Acts 18 or Acts 18, 28. Because Apollos convinced the Jews from the scriptures. He didn't work any miracles. They didn't have any thrills, chills. They didn't see any lightning. They didn't hear any thunder. They just believed the scriptures. Apollos preached the scriptures. He gave to the Jews the word of God and they believed it and they received Jesus as the Christ and God saved them. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll save you. But if you refuse to believe on him, 
you'll be eternally damned in the lake of fire. And it doesn't make any difference what you believe about hell. It doesn't make any difference what you've heard about it, read about it, what your preacher said about it. It doesn't make any difference what your religion teaches about it. There's a burning hell. And I'll guarantee you, if you don't believe it this side the grave, you'll believe it on the other side. But I beg you to believe it on this side and put your faith in Jesus and let him save you right now. Then you'll be in that number when the saints go marching in. And you won't be among that number that'll be cast alive into the lake of fire. God help you to believe the scriptures. He that heareth my word, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Father, honor thy precious word, the precious name of Jesus, the shed blood of his cross, and save every soul that's under conviction. Reclaim the backslidden, revive the indifferent, and, oh, God, that poor skeptic, that poor agnostic, God help them to believe the word and be saved today in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.